morning, everybody. Happy Monday morning and welcome back from a crazy week last week of testing. So if you were testing yet last week, now it's all over. It's a good job. I'm super proud of y'all. Those of you who weren't testing, well, you were probably bored out of your mind with the study hall, but hey, that's okay. So here we are. We're back into where we are just doing our normal thing. So we are back to a normal, normal schedule. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Again, as I go through this, if you have your answers, pop them up there. Again, do the ones you know. You may not know all of them, but if you know just one, great, put it up there. If you know two, put, great, put it up there. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the um, attendance just one more time really quickly before I go ahead and go over the brain stretch. In the meantime, if you know any of them, put them on up there. All right, it looks like everybody's coming in now. All right, beautiful, beautiful. Excellent, I'm seeing some people getting up there. Nice, I like it, I like it. Awesome, all right, let's go ahead and go over it. So let me grab my, I'm gonna go red today and grab my line tool. So we're gonna first of all, take a look at chemical energy. So these obviously are the different types of energies that we have in, um, in physics. So chemical energy is that energy in compounds that is released by reactions, okay? That's a, and we'll talk a lot about that in chemistry, okay? Electrical energy is the energy due to moving electrical charges, okay? We'll talk a little bit about that when we go to circuits and, um, electromagnetism at the last unit of the of the trimester there unit five thermal energy anytime you see thermal it's going to be having to do with heat heat and thermal are kind of interchangeable so heat energy is energy of moving particles the faster they move the hotter they get the slower they move the cooler they are light energy is energy of photons which have no mass potential energy which we'll be talking about a lot today is that stored energy due to its object's height, kinetic energy. Anytime you see the word kinetic, we're talking about motion, we're talking about movement. And then sound energy is that energy of vibration of the air molecules and which go into our ears and then our um, auditory nerve takes it, puts it to our brain and our brain goes, oh, that's the sound of a dog or oh, that's the sound of uh, Mrs. Sepulveda, whatever it may be. So those are the different types of energy. Excellent. Let's go ahead and grab your notes for today. You know the drill, obviously. As I'm going through announcements, make sure you go ahead and um, start opening up those notes for today. Remember, Class Connect sessions are recorded and distributed for learning purposes. Please do not put any personal information or information of others into the chat box for your protection and the protection of others. Make sure you're school appropriate and respectful at all times. And like I will continue to say till the very bitter end, is that make sure you are participating. I can't stress that enough. The more you participate, the more you get out of class, the more you get out of class, the better it is, the faster class goes, and the great your grade is just that much more better. So make sure you are participating. Again, if you're really shy, I have that question and answers box there. That question and answer bo box always just comes to me. So you are participating if you're answering in there also. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our schedule. It is the beginning of week seven of our 12 weeks together. First of all, April is almost over and that is absolutely crazy. We are going into May and before we know it, it's gonna be June. It is day 33 of our 61 day adventure. It is Monday, April 29th. And so today we're gonna be calculating um, potential energy and kinetic energy. You will need a calculator. Okay, I will tell you, we will need a calculator. So if you have one, grab it, put it next to you. If you have a cell phone, grab it, put it next to you. If you don't have either one of those, go ahead and open up a tab in Google and just put calculator and one will pop up for you, but you will need one of, or one of these calculators for today, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at our um, big picture here. We are in unit three, energy and work. We did, did talk about before we left for testing week, the introductory to our unit three roller coaster exam. So make sure that you are working on that. Again, use, I will tell you right now, use that in-depth recording. Those of you who have done the unit three and have used that in-depth recording, you will, you will please, you know, shout out in the chat box. It is a benefit to use that to get through this unit three roller coaster exam, okay? 
So as we continue on, we're going to go ahead and um, take a look down here. Our Unit 3 roller coaster exam is due Thursday, May 9th. So make sure that you get that in on Thursday, May 9th. All right, let's take a look at what we're doing today. We're going to define and calculate potential energy based on its height, and we're going to define and calculate kinetic energy based on its speed. So do two different calculations that we will be learning today. With that being said, I'm going to give everybody just another 20 seconds to get that one open. 20 seconds up on the clock. Here we go. Raise your hand when you are finished. Go, go, go. I'll give everybody just a couple more seconds there. All righty, just checking in here. So Victoria and Rihanna, um, Princess, Moses, good morning to you. How you doing? Let's see, Gia. Make sure we get that in there. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, Ga or Gavin, you're good. Destiny, you're good. Conrad and Azaria. And Alexis, make sure you get those hands up there. All right, excellent job, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and move on. We do have a lot to get through today. So let's go ahead and take a look at our brainstorm here. Now, if I wanted to design a roller coaster, which I think is super cool, don't like them, but, you know, hey, designing them might be kind of cool. If I was to design a roller coaster so it can go really fast at the bottom of the starting hill, what would I need to do to the height of the hill? What do you think I'm going to need to do? If I was going to design a roller coaster and I wanted to go super fast at the very bottom of the hill, what am I going to have to do to that um, top of the hill? What do you think? Am I going to make it higher, lower, keep it the same? What do you think I'm going to do? Lower. Yeah, good, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to make it go taller, right? Absolutely. I'm going to try to get it as high as I can with, you know, with being calculating correctly so we don't kill anybody. But yeah, I'm going to try to get it as high as I can because at the very bottom, I'm going to have a lot of kinetic energy and obviously I'm going to go the fastest, right? So it really shows that potential energy from the height is related to that kinetic energy from the speed. Okay, makes sense, right? The higher you go, the faster you're going to go. You might have done that, obviously, you know, in any little experiment around here. If when you were a kid playing with um, little matchbox cars or something, yeah, the higher you go, the faster you're going to go. So what does this all have to do with it? Well, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be calculating the potential energy due to its height, and we're going to be calculating the kinetic energy due to its speed. Now, and then tomorrow, we're going to actually bring it all together. And so that's where you're going to get, you know, that big equation that's in our um, exam. That's where you're going to get that and you're going to understand why we have each. OK, so first things first, we're going to go ahead and calculate the potential energy. Well, first of all, we got to know what the um, equation is for potential energy. Now, we're going to use the potential energy or the equation for gravitational potential energy. OK, just meaning that we're going to use the height. OK, it's going to be based on height. So we know that potential energy is that stored energy okay, due to its height. And so our equation will be E, and that's going to be energy. E is going to stand for energy and of P, of potential energy, will equal mass times gravity times height. Now, we already know what gravity is. It's that magic number that we have been talking about for a year or for a long time, and that's 9.8 meters per second squared. What we're going to find out in our problems is the mass and the height of our um, of whatever we're calculating. Now, remember, I will tell you, mass is always going to be in grams or kilograms, excuse me, and our height is always going to be in meters. So again, if you know your units, you're going to do just fine. Now, what's interesting here is our answer is going to be in joules. That's a new unit for us. Energy is always in joules. And it's not like joules, like in jewelry, but J-O-U-L-E-S which in essence is just a capital J, pretty easy. So let's go ahead and annotate this first problem here. What is the potential energy of a four kilogram cannonball that is on a 10 meter high platform? So we have two things. And if I come down here, I know that kilograms is going to be my mass. 
I know that 10 meters coming down here is going to be my height. Okay, now I just plug these things in. So when I plug them in, I'm going to come across, I'm going to have four kilograms here. I'm going to come across to G, which is gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, and then we're going to come back to 10 meters for our height. I'm going to play with this a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now all I have to do is multiply. And I'm going to multiply 4 times 9.8 times 10. What do I get? What do I get? Good, Eric. Yes. Good. Let's get some more answers up there. Chris, you're super, super close. Try uh, multiplying that one more time. Excellent, Paige. Excellent. We're doing 4 times 9.8 times 10. Good, Paige. Yeah, I think there you go, Chris. So our answer is 300 and 92 joules. That's how you calculate the potential energy. It's pretty easy, simple multiplication problem. So let's go ahead and put it into our notes. Or remember 392 is gonna go into the answer um, column. And then our units are gonna be a capital J. I'll put our units into the chat box there for those of you who are using alternative devices. So our units are going to equal a capital J. Now, if you want to copy and paste the units, go right ahead, it does not matter to me, but I'm gonna give you about 20 seconds to get this one in. Raise your hand when you are finished. Go, go, go. Couple more seconds. All right, excellent. I see those hands up there. So Victoria and Rihanna, Princess and Moses, Eric and um, Christian, good morning, Christian, Conrad and Chris, Azaria, Alexis, uh, no, uh, yeah, Alexis and Alejandro. Make sure you get those up there. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you, Chris N. Last few people. Again, it's the answer is 392. And then our units are a capital J right here. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Excellent. So let's practice another one of these. We will complete one on our own. So please make sure you are um, letting me know your answers in the chat box so you know you have a good feeling about it and a good understanding of it. So we're going to go ahead and um, take a look here at this one. What is the potential energy of an 80 kilogram boulder that is sitting on top of a 250 meter hill? Okay. Again, if we know our units, then we should be pretty good about which, what are these numbers. Kilograms is always going to be our mass, okay, because grams is the fundamental unit for mass. Meters is going to be the height. And so now I'm just going to plug these numbers in. I'm going to put 80 where it says mass. Remember, gravity is always 9.8. It's that magic number we learned. And then our 250 meter hill. Again, simple multiplication problem. So I'm going to literally multiply and get an answer. So I want you to go ahead and multiply those out and let me know your answer. 80 times 9.8 times 250. Ooh, this is a big number. This is a big number. Nice page. Nice Alyssa. Yeah, that's it. Still waiting for some answers up into the chat box there. Gets a couple more. Nice, Eric. That's good. Excellent. Get some more different people up there. Again, you can always do the question answers. You can do the pub main chat. It's all right. 
80 times 9.8 times 250. What answer do I get? I get a big number. So if you're unsure, like, ooh, do I get a big number? Yes, you do. Good, Chris. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. My answer that I do get is going to be 196,000 joules. Okay. So that's the energy that I will, that will, the potential energy of this particular boulder. So let's go ahead and put it into our notes here. So in my answer spot, I'm going to put 196,000. You do not need a comma. Okay. I'll tell you right now. And our units. Our units are going to be a capital J. Okay, so there you are. If you take a look down here, you have it where it's at. I will put the units into the chat box one more time. So here we go. All right, I'm going to give everybody about another 30 seconds to get this one in. That is Alexis. And, um, as Avatar, the last earthbender, is that correct? My son watches it. It's it's a great little show. It's gotten actually gotten um, some nominations, some nominations. I um, I think it was like best animated series too. Really good show. My son absolutely loves it. Absolutely loves it. I've only watched a couple of them. Yeah, the Airbender. I knew. I knew it was something like that. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Good show. Good show. Excellent. If you haven't seen it and you're like looking for a series. There's a lot of them. I mean, this is a big series, and but it's very, very good. Like I said, has gotten some nominations. I think maybe even won a couple of awards for best animated series. So take a look. I think it's on Netflix too. So if you have Netflix, Avatar, The Last Airbender. Thank you, Alyssa, for reminding me of that. All right, so let's go ahead and check in. Victoria, Rihanna, Princess, Moses, and Linnell. How good morning. How are you all? All right. Yeah, the original. Yeah, exactly. The original is better than the live action, I hear. The live action just didn't quite make it. Just didn't quite do it there. It was so bad. <laughs> I know. How do you how can you destroy that? All right, Victoria, Rihanna, Princess, Moses, Linnell, Joaquin. Good morning, Joaquin. How are you? And um Gia. Good morning, Gavin. Emery and Alexis. Make sure you get those hands up there in Azaria and Chris and Conrad. Yeah, I, you know, like I said, it, it was the TV show that totally got the awards, not the movie, not the movie. All right, beautiful, beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and try one on our own. I think I'm feeling comfortable with this. Again, no answers in the public chat. I'll help you set it up. I'll annotate it for you, but you are going to do the math. And like I said, you can always check your answer with me in the question and answers box. So let's go ahead and go over this. So what is the potential energy of a six kilogram toy helicopter that is flying at 12 meters high? So first of all, we know our units, kilograms is going to be for what? Is that going to be for mass or height? Who could tell me in the chat box? Excellent, Paige. Yes, yes. Good. That is going to be for our mass. Now, what about the 12 meters high? Is that going to be for our whatever we're going to, you know, let, simple H, right? It's going to be exactly what it is. What's left over is height. So now I'm going to go ahead and just put these numbers in. I'm going to put six. And remember, our G is always 9.8 because that's the acceleration due to Earth's gravity. And then our height is 12. From this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. I will give you 35 seconds. So you are literally multiplying 6 times 9.8 times 12 to get your answer. All right, so no answers in the public chat. Let me know in the question and answers box, 35 seconds up on the clock. Just a reminder, our units is going to be a capital J, our capital J. I'll put those also into the chat box there just in case you need that. There you go. So with that, here we go, 35 seconds up on the clock. Raise your hand when you are finished. Go, go, go. All right, Alyssa, you are correct. Rosa, you are correct. Excellent job. Paige, you are correct. Eric, you are correct. Lance, you are correct. Emery, you are correct. Chris, you are correct. 
Just don't forget your um, units, but you are all correct. Linnell, you are correct. Excellent. Actually, Linnell, I want you to, you're, you're super close, like you're boiling. I want you to try it again. I want you to go six. Try this one again. You're like super close though, super close. Samuel, you are correct. I think you actually, you you um, mixed up a couple of numbers. You. Again, when you are finished, go ahead and raise your hand. When you are finished, raise your hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Excellent, excellent. Rosa, don't forget to raise your hand, my friend, okay? Again, once you are finished, please don't forget to raise that hand so I know you're good to move on. And then Linnell, did you see your um, your mistake? You were so close. It's just a mix up of a, like two um, numbers. Yeah, there you go, my friend. Awesome, that's correct. All right, beautiful, beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and move on. I think we are pretty comfortable with the potential energy. Now it gets a little bit more complicated with kinetic energy. And it's, again, not too bad, but just a little bit, okay? So let's go ahead and clear us out and go ahead and talk a little bit about um, kinetic energy and what the equation is for that. So we know that the definition for kinetic energy is that it's ob it's the object's um has due to its motion. That's the energy it has due to its motion. Anytime you hear kinetic, we're thinking of motion, we're thinking of movement. So the equation for kinetic energy is based on velocity. Okay, so we're going to use a little velocity here. And so we are going to look at our equation. So E, remember, capital E is for energy, and that little k is just saying that it's for kinetic energy. It's going to equal one half times mass times velocity squared. Okay. Now, don't get nervous. Anytime people see this um, one half here or a fraction, they, we gotta get, whoa, 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 slow down. We don't like fractions. Even now to my son, I don't know where it's ingrained at that fractions are like no fun because he's just starting it in fifth grade and he's like, I don't like fractions. I'm like, come on. So what is another way we can say one half? That's much easier and that for some reason when we put it into a decimal, it's absolutely happy. We're, we're good with that. What's another way we can say one half in a decimal? Yeah, good, Alyssa. 0 0.5. Good, Samuels. For some reason when we see 0 0.5, we're like, okay, that looks much better than one half or like a fraction. So we're going to go ahead and use 0 0.5. So anytime we see 1 half, we're just going to convert it to a fraction of 0 0.5. We know that we're going to be needing mass. And again, mass is always in kilograms. And the next thing that we're going to be needing is our velocity. And that's always in meters squared. Now, when we take a look at velocity, it also has a um, square root or square. So how can we figure out this? Well, here's the thing how we figure this out. Now, anytime you have something squared, it's really saying that we are multiplying that number twice. So for example, if I had four squared right here, what that means is that I'm gonna multiply four twice, four times four. It does not mean four times two, okay? So that's important. It just says that I'm gonna multiply four twice, four times four. If I had four cubed or four with a three on top of here, that's simply saying that I'm gonna multiply four three times or that number with itself three times. So four times four times four, okay? 
it does not mean four times three. So that's that's important because you'll get a different number when you multiply four with itself three times than it when you would get if you did four times three. So keep that in mind when we do this first problem. So what is the kinetic energy of a 1,800 kilogram Jeep that is driving at 22 meters squared? Okay, I know, again, my units, kilograms is going to be for mass and meter squared is going to be for my velocity. So now that I have everything, I can go ahead and put it into my problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and go across and just put 0 0.5 first because I have that one half. I wanna get rid of that one half, so I'm gonna say it in a different way. I'm gonna put 1,860 kilograms and then my velocity at 22. There we go. Now, everything else, I'm gonna go ahead and just move down. So in this case, I'm going to move down the 0 0.5 and I'm going to move down the 1,860. I'm not doing anything, but I'm going to go ahead and take it out of squaring. So instead, when I look at this, 22 squared is going to simply mean 22 times 22. What is that answer? What is 22 times 22? Mm, super close, Eric. We're not adding. Oh, thanks, Alyssa. I don't know. I will, I will change that right now. I think my hand slipped on my keyboard. Oh, and I have a double. Oh, really, Mrs. Poda? Get it together. Get yourself together, man. There we go. Good, Paige. Yes, good, Jessica. Good, Chris. Absolutely. It's going to be 484. I am literally multiplying. I'm not adding. I am multiplying 22 times 22. That's what that little number says. I'm going to multiply that number with itself two times, 22 times 22. So now I have simply a multiplication problem when I go across here. So what is my multiplication or what is my answer when I have 0 0.5 times 1,860 times 484, what do I get? What is my answer? Woohoo, I get a big answer. Good page. Let's get some more answers up there. Good, Chris. Excellent. Let's get some more. Excellent. Good, Samuel. Good, Eric. Yep. Absolutely. So I get a grand total of good, Chris D. I get a grand total of 450,120 joules. Okay. Makes sense. All right, let's go ahead and put that into our notes here. I'm going to go ahead and put the answer 450120. And my units are going to be a capital J. Again, we're dealing with energy. Energy is joules. There you go. Go ahead and um, lock that into your answers. I'm going to give you about 25 seconds to get that one in. Units equals a capital J. Good, Rosa. That is correct. Awesome. Nice job, Rosa. Raise your hand once you have that locked in. We're going to try one more of these. And then we're going to do one on our own. So again, make sure you're participating and practicing inside the chat box. Alrighty, just checking in here, Victoria, Antarius, Rihanna, and Princess, Moses, Elenail, Lance, and Joaquin. Okay. 
Gavin and Emilio, Christian and Conrad, Azaria, Alexis. Nice job, Emery. Thank you, Lance. Saw you popping up there. Good, Emilio. Nice job. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and keep on moving down because we do, these take a little bit of time. So let's try one, another one together. And then again, like I said, there will be a complete on your own on the next one. So we're going to calculate that kinetic energy. What is the kinetic energy of a 4,300 kilogram roller coaster that is moving at 29 meters per second? Again, kilograms is going to be my mass. And my meters per second is going to be my velocity. So I'm going to go ahead and plug all these numbers in. Now, again, I'm going to convert one half as a fraction into a decimal. We like to look at decimals better than fractions. It's something in our mind. It's something how we're wired. I don't know. So 0 0.5. And my mass is 4,300. And my velocity is 29. All right. So these two things, I'm just going to move down. I'm going to move down the 0 0.5 and I'm going to move down the 4,300. So 0 0.5 and my 4,300. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm going to go ahead now and take it out of um, squaring. So again, 29 to the power of two is simply saying, I'm gonna multiply 29 with itself two times. So that means that it's going to look something like this. It's gonna be 29 times 29. What is 29 times 29? What is 29 times 29? Good, Samuel. Good, Jessica. Let's get some more answers up there. I love it. Good, Chris. Yeah, it's 841. Okay, so now that it's 841, now I have a simple multiplication problem like the potential energy. Real easy. I'm going to uh, multiply 0 0.5 times 4,300 times 841. What do I get? What do I get? Good, Samuel. Look at that. You already have it out of the gate. Excellent. I need to calculate this. Good. Let's get some more answers. Ooh, I get answers up here. Good, Rosa. Good. Nice job with that squaring in, that, um, in the private chat there. Excellent. You guys are doing an excellent job. Yes, Paige. Good, Lance. Absolutely. I get 1,808,150 joules. Woo! You got it, Chris. Excellent. So here we go. 1,808,150 joules. Let's go ahead and put that into our answer box there. Again, I'll put it up here. So take a look. 1,808, 150 and our units are going to be a capital J. There you go. Go ahead and lock that in. Raise your hand once you have that in. I'll give you about um, 25 seconds. Nice, Eric. You got it. Again, when you put it into the answers box, you do not have to put commas. You can just put the number. Okay, you do not have to put commas. Let me go ahead and put the units um, into the chat box for those of you who are using alternative devices. It's a little easier to see. All righty. Again, once you have that in there, make sure you raise your hand so you, I know you're good to move on because I don't want to lose anybody. All right. Nice job, Gia. Nice job, Emery and Samuel. Nice job, Chris. Looking for Alejandro and Alexis. Uh, Azaria, Chris N. Conrad and Christian. 
uh, Gavin and Joaquin, Linnell, Moses, Princess, Rihanna, um, Rosa, Taurus, and Victoria. Nice. Nice job, everybody. Now, this la next one, our very last one, nice job, Rosa, nice job, Linnell and Chris, is going to be a complete on your own. No answers in the public chat, please. No answers in the public chat. I'm going to help you set it up, but you're going to do the math. You can always check your answer with me in the question and answers box. So let's go ahead and um, annotate this. So what is the kinetic energy? And let's see what color I'm going to use. I think I'm going to use purple. What is the kinetic energy of a five kilogram bowling ball that is moving down the lane at seven meters per second? Now, again, kilogram. Is that going to be my mass or my velocity? Who can tell me in the chat box? Is that going to be my mass or velocity? Yeah, good page. Yeah, it's going to be my mass. Remember, kilograms is always mass. Our fundamental unit for mass is grams. Kilogram is just a higher um, unit. And then meters per square is going to be my velocity. Now, I'm going to plug all these in here. Okay, I'm going to plug all this in here. And I'm going to say 0 0.5. Okay, I'm going to take that out of that fraction. We don't want to be looking at no fractions. My mass is 5. And finally, my... Um, Velocity is going to be seven. Put that all in here like so. I think I should have. Now, what I want to do is I want to take it out of that um, squared. So again, when I do that, I'm going to have to multiply seven times seven. What is seven times seven? Okay, I'm multiplying it with itself twice. Okay, that's what it means. I'm going to multiply seven twice with itself. What do I get? Yeah, good page. Yes, I'm seeing all those answers popping up. Yes, Samuel. Yeah, Lance and Alyssa and Eric. Yeah, good, Chris. Yeah, it's 49. So I'm just going to bring down everything. 0 0.5, 5, and I'm going to have 49 here. Now this is where I'm going to turn it over to you. Remember, our units are a capital J. What is how much energy, kinetic energy, do I have? No answers in the public chat. Please chill, uh, let me know in the um, question answers box. Once you are finished, go ahead and raise your hand. I know it's a time, so let's go ahead and get started. Go, go, go. Good page, that is correct. Samuel, you are correct. Lance, you are correct. Rosa, you are correct. Again, don't forget that unit of a capital J. Good, Eric. That is correct. Nice job, Eric. Ten more seconds. Ten more seconds. All right. Nice job, Alejandro. Saw you popping up there. Good job. Make sure when we are finished that you raise your hand. Nice job, Chris. I see that. Uh, Chris, be careful. Multiply. You are just multiplying 0 0.5 times 5 times 49. Okay. Go ahead and try that one again. Yes. Yeah. No worries, Victoria. All righty. Excellent. Let me go ahead and get ourselves out. I know it's two minutes over, so thank you for hanging in there with me. So today we define and calculate potential energy based on its height, and then we did the same for kinetic energy based on its velocity or speed. With that being said, if you can, go ahead and submit your notes. If you need me to go back to something, please let me know in the, um, in the chat. If not, you are free to go. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.